Yeah, yeah, thank you. Are we done with cures and going back to being human, or is that still going to be a possibility for the rest of the series? Well, like, is that just? I, you know, I would. I can't say that we're done with it. I mean, we're done in that there was one cure and it was taken. Um, you know, we are done with the other side. Uh, so the the uh, the options for how to cure a uh, vampire are are pretty limited, if not non-existent. So. Okay. Oh, to put up with that as well, so, you know, doppelgangers have been a really big theme of the show, and Elaine and Seth and a lot of doppelgangers, but I feel like they bring such an interesting element to the show, so are we really done with, you know, seeing doppelgangers? Well, we've, uh, we, we get to play in the doppelganger land every, um, every now and then when, you know, when the story dictates it and the actors are geared up for it. It takes a lot out of them and out of production. You're basically shooting every scene twice. And then every there's visual effects for all the split screens. And so last season we called the year of the doppelganger. It was really driven by Catherine and, and her humanity and then introducing Amara and that whole story. And of course Silas launches into the season. So um, I think for now we're the doppelgangers have been put to bed if nothing else to give our team a, a nice little break where they only have to play one person at once. Now, I've heard um, you talk a little bit about next season and how you're kind of making some changes. Can you talk a little bit about the shift for next year and what you're doing? With well, the you know, interestingly enough, it's, it's not that we're making big changes so much as we are, we are consolidating the tone of the show back to, you know, what we love so much about the first two seasons, which is mystery and suspense and, you know, and character character drama. So there's, you know, a great mystery at the center of the, of the year, which we're very excited about. And, um, and we're really going to get to explore all the characters individually and all the relationships individually in a way that gives us some breathing room without having to kind of top ourselves uh, with the mythology that we left off with. Um, well, let's see. We've got a, a, a slew of great new characters. We've got Colin Ferguson coming in to play Trip Cook, who um, you know is, is actually seemingly a nice guy who's just trying to teach the you know the 18 to 21 year old kids of Mystic Falls like how to be community protectors. They've got a nice town. Uh, it seems fairly benign now. There's no supernatural element, and and so he and Matt Donovan hook up uh, and, and create a nice connection with each other, a nice father, uh, absentee father kind of uh, relationship. Um, and then we have the role of, of Dr. Joe, Dr. Josie Robles, who is going to be played by Jodie Lynn O'Keefe, who is terrific. And um, she's a she's a doctor at the University Hospital. And Elena, one of the things we'll learn in the first episode back, has really thrown herself into uh, pre-med, just like her dad. So Joe will play, you know, an important role in her life. Um, uh, and then we have Chris Wood, who's playing the character of Kai, who very mysterious at this point. We won't even meet him until episode three, but um, he's going to be delicious and, and intriguing, and, and we're going to have a lot of fun with him. Um, and then, of course, you know, we have our beloved Alaric and um, Enzo re rejoining and joining the cast of series regulars. So uh, it feels pretty good to have those boys in our lives as well. Can we expect uh, Luke to stay around um, and uh, because he's finally kind of like a representation of the LGBTQ yeah. um, family. So is he going to stay around or should we not hold on hope for him to survive in such a um, terrible town? <laughs> I'll put it this way. Um, he and his and his twin um, have, a, have a pretty good storyline that we've got cooked up for them. Um, we, we talk every day about how to create some sort of like long-term place for him in the, in the show, a relationship, something like that. Um, we, we still haven't cracked it in a way that makes it like that it will, you know, that it will demand the story that deserves to be told. Um, we don't have any plans to, to get rid of him anytime soon. So Good. Steriline was hinted at at the end of last season. Is this something that we might possibly be seeing? Well, I think that maybe by the very end of the season, Caroline was starting to question her feelings and, and wonder, like, you know, hey, we're such good friends and we really trust each other. And she was surprisingly jealous um, as we got towards the end of the season of, of, of his seemingly renewed attachment to Elena, which turned out to not be true at all. But um, I think she surprised herself with those feelings. And, um, and so when we come back in, she'll be dealing with that a little bit. And how she deals with it, um, it's a bit surprising because... And, and, 
mostly because of the choices that he himself has made in the four months that we have passed since the end of the season um, in dealing with the loss of Damon and Bobby. Yeah. Yes, indeed. Um, where he is, why is he there, what is it, and how does he get out, and how do they get out, um, are the big questions that give us the first run of episodes of the season. And we're, we've developed quite an interesting world and uh, context for them. Um, and the two of them together, it's going to be a lot of fun, because of course they, you know, they love and hate each other pretty equally. So they will eventually get out, right? Well, I mean, I don't want to spoil the whole season, but I, uh, I, it won't just be the Cat Grammy and Summer Holder storyline for the next two years. Um, we'll, we'll be able to bring, you know, elements of our team back together over the course of the season. What episode are you shooting? We just started shooting the second episode. Yeah, but we've got scripts for about the first seven, so it feels good. We're ahead. <laughs> that never happens. <laughs> As an executive producer, can we just talk about the relationship with you and CW? I feel like Vampire Diaries have almost helped to launch CW and vice versa a little bit. We actually have a really good relationship with Network. Um, you know, it started when Dawn Ostrom was still there. She's the one that put Vampire Diaries on the air, but when Mark Pettywitz came in, he was a legit fan. He made a point of watching all the shows that he was taking over and called us personally to say that he had really, really, you know, become attached to the Vampire Diaries universe. And um, he was the first one to mention the word spinoff. So um, I, I actually, they, we have a mutual trust. Uh, and it's very typical. I've never had a relationship with a network like this where, you know, we can talk things out, we can debate things. They will trust me and I will listen to them. But there's always that in the moments when we don't necessarily agree, they'll they'll say, look, you've, you've proven yourself and we believe in you. So it's it's really a beautiful, beautiful connection. So I'm very grateful for that. <laughs> yeah. Thank you guys. Thank you, Thank so, you much. so much. Bye guys. Have a great day.